So, um, I'm recanting that hello. Uh, right. So, so like Mount, so like Malthus, Malthusian model would be like, uh, I mean, it's actually like the assumptions are, are fairly neoclassical. Okay. So, um, you have some, let's, let's have productivity and, uh, capital and labor. Okay, so the only difference is, you know, this is this looks a lot like solo, right? Um, in terms of the, I mean, it's a Cobb Douglas uh, production function, my favorite production function. Um, and uh, it um, has, I'm writing K here, but really, this is confusing, but we're going to say K is land, okay? And L is labor, okay? But, you know, um, right? So then the idea is, uh, you have some fixed amount of land, and then you know you got people with a little plots of land, okay, here, and they all have you know. So so the more uh, people there are, the less uh, land each per the land per person is, right? So if you, um, yeah, I mean that's that's inescapable, right? So um, now uh, if you think about um, the productivity, okay, then what is that? That's so that's output per person, right? So then you're going to get uh, z k to the alpha l to the minus alpha, right? Which is z k over l to the alpha, okay? Right, so this is, I mean, this is this is also just like it's something that's true, uh, for Cobb Douglas in general, right? Um, but we're just sort of applying it, um, so here. Uh, you can see that um, if that, I mean, let me actually use my pointer. So if that L there is higher, right, and the amount of land is fixed, that's going to push down up a per person, which is up a person is the standard of living. Okay, We're just, I mean, you just consume. There's no savings or investment. You just consume whatever you produce. Okay, um, and if you want to. Um, Use usually I'll use lowercase letters for uh, per capita no stuff. So it's like per capita. This would look like that, right? So like y little y is um, per person. Uh, little k is capital per person. Uh, to differentiate capital k from lowercase k, I'm gonna like it crosses like this versus like that. Okay, but it's it's in general fairly confusing. Um, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so so this is just like a standard. Uh, transformation for for cop levels okay but so but but here i mean the critical thing is just that like you have this overcrowding thing which is like i don't know um yeah it's 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 just the assumption of the model basically or it's the implication of, of the having a cop douglas with a fixed amount of land um okay and so so that's like pretty standard okay um and then so this is like the, the production side, okay, and then the, the for Malthus, what you add in on top of just like Cobb Douglas um, is uh, how does population grow? Okay, um, and essentially this this is an assumption. Okay, the assumption is that uh, population grows like something like this. So let's call it y minus y bar. So so essentially. There's um, the 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 growth, and I guess this is getting into sort of the continuous time stuff, right? So, and the notation, which is important. Okay, uh, so first of all, in terms of notation, um, L dot, right? That's going to be the derivative. Okay, so you, I don't know, maybe you've seen this before. Um, oops, L dot is you know just uh, dl dt. Okay, because you know we're going to be doing so many derivatives like that. It's annoying to write d whatever dt, so we're going to put you know l dot. It's a standard engineering notation too. Um, okay, and so then that's going to be our der the derivative, time derivative of l, and then the uh, l dot over l. This is the proportional or the normalized version of that, which is which is the growth rate. Okay, so the growth the growth rate in general is is l dot over l. Okay, and um, there's a bunch of cool, I think cool. Uh, tricks that you can do with the growth rate, uh, which are really just analogous to um, the rules for logarithms, okay? Um, that make, th make they're gonna make our lives a lot easier, okay? And actually, 
that's that should after I do Malthus, that's probably going to be the next thing I do is like tricks to do with growth rates because we'll see that the, the those are going to be useful. Okay, but for now let's just talk about Malthus. Um, so so then the assumption is that the uh, the growth rate of population is theta times uh, the difference between y. This is the same y here, output per person, and some y bar. So this is like uh, what I'm going to call subsistence output. Okay, so that's just like how, how much you as a person individually need to uh, survive. Okay, and so if you have more than that, then let's say you you um, either your health improves because you have better nu nutrition or you decide uh, to have children and you can feed the children with that excess output. Okay, so that's that's the assumption and, and we're just combining um, birth and death into like a net thing. Okay, we're not we're not taking a stand on which one it is because we don't need to. Okay, um, so that that's the Malthusian assumption basically. Okay, the fixed amount of land and this particular positive relationship between uh, standard of living and and the population growth. Okay, so and we'll get into why that's not necessarily a good assumption on either count, right? Obviously, especially with regard to land, um, or with regards to both, really. So, but if you, if you take that, okay, then then that basically gives you the Malthusian dynamic, where if 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 you're in a situation where let's say there's not a lot of people and there's a bunch of land, everyone has huge sprawling estates, which somehow they can farm all of it. Uh, yeah, so. It's, you know, obviously, if your estate is is vast and you're one person, at some point you just can't farm it. Okay, that's encoded in Cobb Douglas because you have decreasing um, <clears throat> marginal product of capital of land in this case, right? So once you get more and more land that's like you know 20 miles away from you, it's like okay, I'm not going to farm that because I'd have to walk all the way out there. So um, that's encoded in the Cobb Douglas production function, but it's still true that like kind of having more land is weekly better for output. Um, Okay, so so there's a lot. Everyone has a huge estate because there's not many people, um, and so uh, this population growth rate rule should say, okay, you have a lot of output, much more than subsistence. You're gonna maybe, I mean, if, I mean, think about your your medieval peasant, the the, the stereotypical medieval, um, not peasant, I guess you'd be a lord. Uh, you have too much land, you're gonna generate children to work the land, basically. So, um, but you're also gonna feed them, and so. That's that would be like one rationale behind this, right? So you <clears throat> um, uh, have positive population growth, but then over time, not like continuously, right? But like this is where the the <clears throat> the notion of a continuum is sort of silly to think about. But like you know, you have more more children, they eventually grow up. They they're uh, landowners themselves, and so then you get more uh, kind of congestion. The amount of land per person goes down, right? Um, and that uh, standard of living, Y is going to go down. If that keeps going, if you can follow that logic forever, eventually Y is going to converge to Y bar, okay? And that means that L dot over L equals zero, which means that L is itself constant, right? Because L, L dot is zero. So the growth rate, of, the population is going to equilibrate to some level such that the standard of living is equal to Y bar. Okay, everyone's kind of just happy, not happy, but like actually rather unhappy probably uh, at that particular standard of living, which is the subsistence standard. That's bad. Okay, Y bar is bad. All right, it's like really just enough to survive. Okay, that's the critical. That's that's the bad part about Malthus is that the outcome is not good. Um, okay, uh, so that's that's the rationale. And then you can also, if, if um, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, so. You, I, if you think about what happens with a, a change in, in technology, so let's say that Z goes up, okay? Nothing changes about what I said, okay? So if Z goes up, in the short run, uh, Y is gonna be higher, right? Sorry, Y is gonna be higher because this Z goes up. Uh, this is gonna go up. You're gonna increase in population, but this still holds. You're still going to converge to a constant L. The L is going to be higher because you can sustain more people on the on the fixed amount of land, right? So you, you the the productivity of the working the land goes up, right? So you're going to get more people, uh, such that 
you you reconverge back to that subsistence standard. So you're going to get more people, but you're not going to get an increase in the standard of living. Okay, so that's like the really bad part about the Malthusian outcome is that even if you say improve agricultural productivity, um, you still converge back to that subsistence wage. Okay, which is why it's like you know there were improvements in technology that happened historically, but they didn't always tend to change things substantively, substantively. So why, you know, this is one rationale for that. Okay. So that, that's, that's Malthus. Okay. So, I mean, Malth, you know, it's a, it's a, people talk about Malthus a lot. I mean, it's pretty well known. Um, I think, you know, it's been obviously sort of abused as a theory over time. If, if you think about Malthus, the guy, Thomas Malthus, he was around like 1800, looking backwards, wasn't a bad theory. It's like, I need to explain why the standard of living didn't change that much over time. Here's an idea, okay? Um, the funny thing, though, is that, like, sort of exactly at that moment, also, it turned out that the world changed and that, that he was wrong. So, like, forward-looking, he, like, he was actually basically not correct because we got the Industrial Revolution. But backward-looking, like, maybe, I mean, it's it's a reasonably concise theory of, of the lack of, of improvements in the standard of living, right? So... But it's just that he happened to come at the exact time that it changed. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, okay, so then we can think about, are these assumptions good or bad? I mean, fixed land assumption, is that good or bad in terms of, is it believable or reasonable? There's a lot of land out there. Uh, and, you know, even in relatively congested areas, there's still a lot of land that people were not using. Okay, so the question is, why you know if you're stuck in the Malthusian world, why not go out and 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 uh, you know find some unoccupied land and live there? Um, well, you know you could say uh, people obviously did that, uh, but you could also say it's like okay, you're a peasant and you want to go out and find occupied land. You need to defend yourself against other people and like. Maybe it's easier just to stick in your, stay in your uh, protective village or whatever, right? So there, there's a, the physical safety component. Um, also, it's like the forest. Historically, it was like, it's pretty scary. I mean, like all these fairy tales, you know, about the forest. Um, uh, in the sense, and, and really what that means is like, you had to kind of clear the land. Like you can't just go live there and, you know, like everything's just idyllic. It's like, there's bugs and like, it's, it's like a bad scene. There's swamps, you know, there's whole areas of the U S where the, that were just like totally uninhabitable, like the, the great dismal swamp. Um, there's one in, in Ohio too. And it like, they had to invent new technology to like clear that out and make it habitable. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, the U S is, the U S is different because it's like, it wasn't uninhabited, uh, when the Europeans came here, that should be noted. Um, but if you think about like in Europe, there, they, you know, there are probably areas that were not inhabited. It's just like you can't just go and live there necessarily, is what I'm saying. So then, you know, I, I don't know where to stand on on the fixed land supply. Could go either way. Um, uh, number two, the reasonability of um, basically this population growth rate rule. So essentially, my take is for low levels of low standard. Of, okay, let me just draw a picture. A thousand words. Um, what what does this really look like? If we think about, sorry, um, Y versus L dot over L, right? So Malthus is saying uh, that it's it's basically, and actually this can go negative, right? So if you have too many people, you can deplete the population. So he's saying that this is some linear function like this, and that that equilibrium point is here is this is Y bar, okay? So he's saying, and so this. This here, the the slope of this line is is theta, okay. So that's that's our Malthusian. Maybe uh, that's reasonable for low standards of living, but essentially, um, probably what happens is you know at some point that peaks and then you actually get a decrease. Okay, and so let's extend this out here, um, and maybe even this re, re intersects with the the axis. Okay, so what we see in the modern world is actually just a snapshot of that component of uh, this this demographic curve, if you want to call it that, right? Um, wherein higher standard of living, if you look at if you if you look at uh, countries with with higher incomes, they generally have lower uh, rates of uh, population growth, um, and so that's what we're seeing um, 
on this side here. Essentially, we don't see places that are quite as poor as historically. Okay, so there, there are countries obviously that are, that are very poor, but but even then they're they're probably more in like this range versus all the way down towards Y bar. Okay, so um, I mean that's my basic take is that, like essentially like there's a world out here maybe that used to be around uh, that was more Malthusian, but like in the modern world we're more on the side of the curve and so things are a little different. Okay, so um, yeah, and and so this can actually. When you when you think about this, if you think about the entirety of the model like this, then you can start getting situations with sort of multiple equilibria. Um, whether you end up on the the low side or the high side can be sort of history or path dependent. Okay, and that, that's pretty interesting. And then it also becomes a little bit more intricate thinking about changes in productivity. They could potentially bump you from sort of the low equilibrium to the high equilibrium. So th there's a couple different things that can go on there, um, and then make it more interesting and more probably hopefully more realistic. But um, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's kind of my take is that maybe maybe good predictive, not predictive, maybe good descriptive power for the past, probably not so great predictive power for the future um, with regards to Malthus uh, or the present really. Um, but, but an interesting way to start things. And also, I mean, it's kind of interesting, like you just sort of first model, relatively simple model to think about these continuous time dynamics. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it for 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 Malthus. Um, uh, so we're gonna. So next time, I guess I'm I'm, I'm basically out of time. Uh, so next time we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit more on the sort of you know um, how to work with growth rates. Okay, various tricks for that. Um, that's gonna make our lives easier in the future. Uh, we're going to do solo. Okay, you've already seen solo, obviously. We're going to do solo in the continuous time and work through that. And then we're going to kind of parlay that into Ramsey at some point, which is which is like a neoclassical growth style model. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, I, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. I enjoyed the first class. I hope you enjoyed the first class. Um, going to be a different world on Thursday a little bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to it personally. Um, should be interesting. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know. We're not, I don't know. First homework. It's not clear when the first time I'll, I'll come out with first homework soon, but we've basically done almost nothing so far. Um, so there's not much we can do. So, but, but eventually we'll, we'll start on that first homework. I'm going to try and keep a pretty good pace just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, maybe err more towards like shorter, more frequent homework assignments. Um, how did, what, what was the, what's the general pacing on homework assignments for the other courses? Like once or two weeks, maybe or every for week. this semester. Yeah. Or, or last semester. For the last semester, they were pretty weekly. Uh, weekly this semester. You're the only person we know for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, but last semester it was mostly weekly homework assignments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, econometrics was bi weekly. Bi weekly as in weekly. once every two weeks? Right. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll probably do closer to once every two weeks, I think. So yeah. That's that's the plan for now. Okay. Um any other questions? Out there? No? Okay. Uh all right, yeah, and if you have if you have anything, just uh, shoot me an email. Um otherwise I'll see you guys on Thursday.